having grown. Uh, we started working with them in 2011. Our background comes from engineering. We used to do solar panels, uh, wind, hydrogen. I guess we always had this thing about how are we going to power ourselves, especially with the changes of the climate and everything that's happening. So we entered this competition called Solar Decathlon. And you're supposed to build a house, uh, with any size model, approximately four meters by five meters, and you have to make it run completely on what you can put on top of your roof. And it's done every year, it's done with universities, with government, and with private institutions. We use the same material as the Germans, we use the same engineering as used in the States, we have exactly everything the same, and we came almost dead last. In the wow. Wow. <laughs> what did we do? And little do we know that all the building materials that we have with, we lose all the energy. Most of the building in Mexico is made with blocks, with bricks. They're the least thermal materials. Yes, they're the cheapest. Yes, right. they're resistant. But that resistant, we have to analyze it in a different way. Because unfortunately, we have a lot of earthquakes in Mexico. And earthquakes don't kill people. It's badly specified concrete that we put on top of our heads, uh, tons of it. And when we have a building, what are we actually using all these concrete for? To put a table? We put a fridge, a lot of stuff we hang on the wall, but we've specified at least 50 to 60 tons on top of our head. And that comes down to the building, all that compound comes to each other. When it comes to rescue services, you only have three days before you can clear out all that material, and all that material has to be cleared out by hand. Otherwise, the machine will come down. The same thing happened in Colombia. Colombia, 1993 approximately, they have a place called Armenia. They, had, they built a whole massive town with what they call materials, but uh, it's a bad translation, but they call it materials. If it's anything else, bamboo, which uh, the Germans call structural or vegetable steel, and in Latin America it's called format wood. Mm -hmm. So we find that all these materials, they built these new homes. Technically, you can grab lime, hemp, and water, and you'll get a mix. But it doesn't, it takes a long time to carbonate. And when I mean a long time, compared to the building materials that we use today. Today's building materials are so quick that there's even people that rate houses, they build a house a day, 1.5 houses a day. But really, architecture is one of the seven wonders of the world. And are we really one of the seven wonders of the world that they do shoeboxes? <laughs> 
one after the other without any thermal issues. All these materials are very toxic. The sealers, um, here they, they use a lot of the, the drywall, the mold issues that people have with the wood and humidity. It's like taking into account saying, yes, we have all the certifications, all the standard, all the engineering, but we forgot that we live in nature. We forgot that we have humidity. We forgot that we have air. We forget that the seasons change. That means that materials have to either expand and come back. And that's the problem when you start adding it's good to add all these membranes and all these things, but there's at least six different materials which will expand and, expand and contract. Those tiny gaps, even though visibly we cannot see a gap, but air will move through it. And air and water will do everything, thank God. And that's part of what we have to think about our buildings. We're thinking static. We're thinking sealing them up. What happens if you grab a bag of water and put it in the sun? What happens to the water? It will evaporate but it has nowhere to go. It will just drip back in. That's basically what's happening in your homes. Humidity is being brought in, may it be because of you cook, may it be through transpiration, may it be through your plants, but the humidity will be inside your building. If we seal it to make sure that the cold stays in or the hot, but the heat doesn't come in, where does the water go? And then it starts getting into the drywall, into the corners, underneath the paint, and when it starts getting behind there, that's the problem. We can fix buildings from the outside inward, but from inside outward, you're done. You pretty much have to take the building down and put it back up again, or it's going to be a very expensive building. So that's also the beauty about this material. It's very easy to repair. It's very easy to install. As you see, we have minimal tools. You don't really need high-tech things. You actually need to be a builder, just like before. Before, people didn't have the lasers and all these things, but it's very easy to get a square. And that's, I guess, the beauty of Pythagoras. If you ever want to have a perfect square, just count three units one way, four units one way, five units have to close, three, four, five, Pythagoras theorem, and you get a perfect 90 degree angle. And as long as you have a perfect 90, you know, because what happens if you have a laser and you're out in the field and you're in the sun and you can't see the laser? Ah, oh, no, we're not working today, right? <laughs> so that's the idea about coming back to building. Building is something like cooking. It's very noble. Yes, we have all the recipes. Yes, we have all the techniques. Yes, we have all the certifications. But cooking is not done by books or by recipes. Cooking is done by experience. The more you do it, the better you become at it. And in the US, there's some of the best builders that we've seen. There's some of the best tools. Adding hemp to this is something very straightforward. Now, in this particular case, we have just a tiny bit of extra wood, wouldn't you consider it? <laughs> This is a double stud way of putting it. Um, that's something that we have to consider also about hemp. It can, it's not really a structural material per se, by, I guess by US coding or by international coding. But that doesn't mean that you can make it structural. Some bricks on their own are not structural. But if you put them in a dome, the actual shape of the dome, that's what brings the structure into place. So you can do the same thing with hemp. It's just, it really comes down to certifications. Here in the U.S., it's very, very strict on how you can build, where you can build, and what you can do. Now, it not being structural means that all the other parts you need to really comply with on the building comes down to the wood grain. Now, wood is great material. Fortunately, we're having a bit of issues on the planet. We have some changes of temperature. We are not having rain. Uh, Mexico is in one of the worst droughts in the moment. It's actually hotter in some parts of Mexico than the Sahara Desert. That's how bad we are. And we don't have water. So who's going to grow the crops? It's all dry here. It's all dry over there. So we need to start thinking that trees are fundamental to start bringing the water back. And hence, we're in this conundrum because we need to make houses, but we need to have trees. That's why here, Mr. Lucas, they have the hemp rebar. Hemp rebar is one of the best things that could have happened because standard rebar will corrode with lime. Any metal that you put with lime, you have to protect. So when it comes to structures, yes, you can use a metallic structure, you can use a wood structure. We personally like bamboo because it's something very, very, very abundant and it's stronger than steel. And you can actually grow it. They used to call it a plague in some places. Well, that's great, you know? Something that's a plague, well, Let's go chop it down and let's go make houses out of it. If you actually take the amount of houses that need to be built, 
and you take how many or how many pounds of wood or how many trees you need, there's not enough trees. There's literally not enough trees to make everybody a house. So that's also where the engineering should come into play because part of engineering is what we call life cycle analysis. Where do your materials come from? How much energy do you take to take something out of the ground? How much energy do you use to transform it? How do you compost it back? And that's one of these things of this, this material. It's 100% compostable. Mm -hmm. That material you can actually spread out over your land. It will take time to compost, but it's got lime, which will help stabilize the ground. And it's got natural fiber, so the my mushrooms and the mycelium will basically pick up. So that's also something that you mm -hmm. change the, the mentality of our material. One of the worst things that happens in a building site is the amount of trap that is generated by the packaging of all the stuff that they use. And then a lot of that packaging is not, even though it's plastic or something, it's not really recyclable because it holds very, very toxic or very chemical elements. Mm -hmm. And all those toxic and chemical elements, we're putting them right on top of our houses, <laughs> right where our children sleep, and they're like, yeah, sleep tight. You know, right. <laughs> so when you actually think about it, you can replace all those elements by just this, and you take away the toxicity, and you take away the weight, because you drop, when you talk about concrete, or when you talk about adobe, we do it by um, kilograms or tons, but you're talking about 2,000, 2,500 kilograms of weight in one, call it a cubic yard almost. This will only weigh 280 kilograms. So you're dropping the weight by 85%. That means that your foundation doesn't have to be that heavy. That means that all the material that you're throwing to the job site is not that heavy. So there's all this savings by just changing one material and it translates to so much of the job site. Honestly, there's no cheaper way of building that we know of in Mexico than it is with lime. And we don't use hemp as much because there's this whole issue that they still think it's, it's bad, you know, it's the devil's method. But we use agave and we use coconut. There's so much agave in Mexico. We used to think that hemp was going to save the world, like that guy said. It's going to be a bad opportunity to eat it. Keep freaking, good house. <laughs> but there's so much of it that most people have a situation with hemp in the same way. That there's so many fields producing, that they're making the fiber for textiles, and that they have all the herd, which traditionally in Europe is a waste, and they give it to you for free. Currently, hemp is not very cheap. Is kind of one of the most expensive insulation materials at these current prices. And that's why we have to work on and expanding the industry so we can bring that down. So that this is accessible for everybody. And that's the idea about hemp. Hemp is not something hemp. It could be house, it could be medicine, it can be clothing, it can make bioplastic, you can make advanced garments, it helps with diabetes. If we talk about THC, there's some cases about cancer. So that's what we call it, like the little gene. Anything you ask for it, it will give it to you. But if we grow hemp in a monoculture, if we grow hemp with pesticides, if we do the things exactly the same way that we're doing, even though we do hemp, it's not going to change the world, and it's not going to get us healthy homes. And so that's what we have to start revolutionizing, and that's the beauty, because we change straight from the soil. And if you can grow your house, and grow your food, and grow your energy, and grow your medicine, you know, grow your freedom, just basically, Hallelujah. That's why we love the material so much. And with agave, it's kind of the same thing. There's so much being produced that if you go to somebody, uh, a distillery, and tell them, can you give me a truckload, they'll give it to you free, dried, shredded, and you might get a six pack along the way. Right? <laughs> you know, well, subsidized to a certain point. Right? You know? And that's when it becomes very, very very cheap to build because lime is very cheap compared to cement sure. so if you drop half of the cost lime has half of the embodied carbon in it mm. so you already have like 50 60 percent saving then when you add all the carbon that you suck up from growing hemp you have a carbon negative material and that's one of the most crazy engineering things i've ever heard because as any manufacturer who has a carbon negative footprint in a very intensive industrial application, no. and construction, 
at least the cement industry is 8% of global emissions. If, we if it was a country, it would be the third largest country on the planet. For those massive companies, they're hit with the competition. Semics are both in the next one. And that's why we used to knock on their door and tell them, bring the line, let's do something, talk to innovation. We spoke so much to them until they just referred us to them. They're like, ah, oh, stop bothering us, call these guys. <laughs> we spoke to them and like, can't, they're like, can't. Line, sure, let come down. And that's why it's this. This is the magic, I guess, of, there's many kinds of hemp trees. Just as in building, we have aggregates. But we're substituting the rock aggregate is for the hemp. The hemp, there's many kinds of hemp. Even though the IRC code states that you have what they mentioned, building grade. But building grade, according to the certification, is dust free, fiber bundle free, and your brick has to reach, I believe it's like one megapascal or 0.1 megapascal of compression, which is nothing. You can just probably step on it and you have like that one megapascal.